Hello there, my name is Devin Knight, and I am continuing in a series focused on robotic process automation using the Power Automate desktop. In this set of videos, we're going to be taking you through an end-to-end -end solution building out a Power Automate desktop solution. This uh, solution that we're going to be going through is actually coming from an application that's leveraged and used with inside of the RPA in a day class that you can find for free at pragmaticworks.com. I'll share a link below where you can find how to sign up for that free uh, viewing of the RPA in a day class. We're going to be using the same application from that class, but taking a slightly different spin on it than what you will experience in the class. So don't worry, you're not going to be seeing anything exactly the same as what you would have in that class. So let me take you through the scenario that we're trying to automate. We have, in our case here, a legacy application, which you can find right here. Our legacy application is called the Contoso Invoicing Application. And what we'd like to do with it is automate the entry of our accounts. So we're going to be taking this through multiple small set of videos, this being the first one introducing the application as well as getting started with a basic Power Automate solution. So what we want to do is we want to make the process of entering in a new account with inside of our Contoso invoicing system to be automated. Now we're going to start this process because we have uh, uh, theoretically here manual entries of accounts and invoices and uh, you can also see things like support cases all done with inside of this application, this legacy application. There is no API for it. It's just something that we've been using for decades at my fake Contoso company. And I want to find a way to automate it. And that's where Power Automate Desktop comes into play. So I have Power Automate Desktop already installed. I did do a little bit of a tutorial of Power Automate Desktop in a previous video called Getting Started with Power Automate Desktop. So take a look at that if you want to get a full kind of lay of the land of how this tool works. But in this demonstration, we're going to be trying to solve a problem, and that is to automate that Contoso invoicing application that we saw right here. So what I'd like to do is we're going to start by creating a new desktop flow. So I'm going to select new flow once you have the Power Automate desktop installed. And we do, and we're logged in, so I'm going to go ahead and select new flow. Once you select new flow, you need to create a name of the flow. So we'll go ahead and call this one uh, account entry, something like that. And then we'll hit create to create a new desktop flow. So it's going to create the flow, but it's also going to launch the Power Automate Desktop Designer where we can begin to uh, enter in and create our new desktop flow. Now, there's a lot, bunch of different things that we could do to get started here. If we want to launch our application, we can come up to the top here under the action section and we can search for things like uh, the ability to launch applications. You can find that here. You can launch Excel. You can launch Chrome. You can also find run application, which is actually what we want to do in this case. So I'm going to select and find the run application action and drag that into the middle of the design surface. Again, I'm not going over too many of the basics because you can go back to that previous video, the getting started with Power Automate Desktop to learn more about the basics here. All right, now the application that I want to run in this case is the Contoso invoicing application, which I can find by searching for it where it says select file here. So I'm going to go ahead and select the file and find the application that I want to run, which is going to be under my program files x86 folder inside my Contoso incorporated and my Contoso invoicing and I'll find it right here. Now, if you're if you're interested in following along in this example, all you really have to do is download the RPA in a day class files. That is a Microsoft class that Pragmatic Works, among many other partners, deliver for Microsoft. And you'll find this application that you can install with inside the class files. And once you install the application, feel free to follow along through this example. Again, I'll put the links below in the description on where to find those course files. So I'm going to go ahead and select the legacy invoicing app and hit open. And then I'm going to hit save. And that is going to launch my invoicing, my Contoso invoicing application. If I want to validate that that's going to work, first of all, let's go ahead and close the one we have already open. And I can save this desktop flow and we're going to run it to just validate that it is going to launch the application like we think it should. So I'm going to go ahead and hit run. And as we should expect, it launches the application for us on screen. That's perfect. We're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this application open for a moment because what we're going to do next is we're going to use something called the desktop recorder, which you can find right here. 
And we're going to use that desktop recorder to be able to record the actions that we want to perform within our application. So rather than searching through all the actions on the left-hand side here, we want to use the desktop recorder to collect some of the actions for us. So we're going to go ahead and select the desktop recorder. And when we do that, it's going to launch the desktop recorder. And you'll want to pay attention to what screen it opens up on. It happened to open up on this one far over here for me. So let me go bring that over here on the correct screen. There it is. And with the desktop recorder launched, you're going to hit the record button. And everything after you click that record button is going to be captured when you go to hover above those elements with inside your application. So if I want to record what it looks like for me to create a new account or add a new account, I can record those steps here and then those steps will be pushed into the Power Automate desktop and that way I can automate those steps over time. Kind of like an Excel macro almost. All right, so I'm going to hit uh, record. And when you hit record, the thing that you want to keep an eye out for is that you see this red rectangle start to appear above the different UI elements on your screen. If for some reason you don't see that red rectangle, close the desktop recorder and launch it again. I have had some cases where the desktop recorder does not appear right away. And if that's the case for you, close the desktop recorder, launch it again, you'll be good to go. So what we want to do in this case is we're going to add a new account. So if I want to record the steps that go into adding a new account, then I would select the accounts option right here. And you can see it recorded that in the UI element capture right here. Then I'm going to go up to select the new record button right here. And you can see it recorded that step as well. Then I'm going to go over to the form entry area where we see the account name, the contact, and the email, and I'm going to enter in the information. Now, as you enter in information into a form, when you go from one field to another field within your form, I do recommend that you use your mouse to go from one area to another, meaning I don't recommend using the tab key. Uh, it should work if you use the tab key from going, from going to one element to another element. But I like to kind of be deliberate in clicking that, hey, I'm in this cell now, now I'm in this cell, to make sure that it captures that movement from one to another. Uh, I have had in some cases when I just use the tab key that it, it messes things up on occasion. So I'm going to go ahead and select inside the account name, and I'm going to type in my special account name here called Devin's Donuts. Okay, and then I'm going to put my primary contact in here. It's going to be Devin Knight. And then my contact email is going to be Devin Knight at DevonsDonuts.com. All right. Then when I'm happy with the entry of that, I can come up to the top here and hit Save Changes. That will now save the entry of that uh, new account. And I can stop my desktop recorder or pause my recorder now, now that I've done what I need to do here. You can also just come on the bottom and hit Finish. And that will finish the recording and capture all of those steps and now bring it into the Power Automate desktop. So if we want to test this out, we can go ahead and close the application, the Contoso invoicing application. We can close it out and we can go ahead and save our work. I always like to save frequently, just like every application is a good idea to do. And then I can hit run and this will now launch the application and then enter in the information for our account. I don't have to even have my hands on the keyboard. You're going to see that the Power Automate desktop is going to do that on its own for us. And by right now, it's actually doing this by hard coding in the information that we typed in earlier. What we're going to do over the course of the next couple videos is actually show how you can make that dynamic and pass in variables and things like that. All right. So you can see that seemed to work. The one thing that uh, I need to probably add here at the end is I want to close this application. Right now, this application opens, but it never closes. So I want to have something that actually closes this application after a little while. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the close uh, option on here for now. And what I'd like to do is I'm going to leverage, and we're going to talk more about variables in a future video, but I want to leverage this flow variable that was created automatically for me whenever I use the run application uh, action in the very beginning. Whenever we added that run application action, one of the things that you may have noticed is that a new variable got created immediately after we hit save called app process ID. And this is recording the app process ID that is the instance of the Contoso invoicing application that we've opened. So if I want to make sure that I close the same application that I opened, then I can use this app process ID variable. It's a flow variable, which you can find over here on the right or above my head. I can tell Power Automate that I want to close that same process ID that I opened in the very beginning. 
So to do that, I can go over to the action section here and I can search for something like a terminate, terminate process. And you can either double click on this or drag and drop it down here at the bottom. By the way, one of the things you'll notice is that whenever you use the desktop recorder is it automatically adds in these little annotations here. You can remove those if you want. That's just kind of some auto-generated uh, uh, commenting to let you know that these were just added in here uh, on its own. So you, you can remove steps two and steps nine here if you wanted to. I'm gonna leave them in there just so that we know that it came from a desktop recorder. All right, now I added in this terminate process action, and if I want, I can tell it that I wanna process uh, or terminate the process either by name or ideally by the process ID because that's the variable value that I'm storing here. So I'm gonna select the process ID, and then the process ID that I want to close is gonna come from a variable rather than me hard coding it. So I'm gonna select the variable, and we're gonna choose the app process ID variable. And we'll hit save. All right, looking good. So now I can go ahead and hit save on this. And I can run this again, and we should see this application open, enter the information for us, and then close immediately once it's done entering and saving the information for us. So let's see that in action here. And it closed, so it worked perfectly. Now it worked really quickly. So while you're debugging, what you might find yourself doing is adding in a few delays or, or kind of pausing uh, to make sure that you can actually see what's happening with inside of your work here. So if you want to add in a wait, it's not a delay, it's a wait, you can actually add in a different wait action here and say, hey, before you close the application, I wanna see visibly and verify that everything worked as intended. So if I wanted to, I could come drag down a wait down here on the bottom, and I can tell it in the number of seconds how long I want it to wait. So if I want to, I can say, hey, wait five seconds before you close, and I can hit save, and save this flow again, and then we'll run it one more time and we'll be able to see this desktop flow open our application, enter in the information, wait five seconds, and then close when it's done. And that'll wrap up this video as we get started understanding the Power Automate desktop. We've seen here after five seconds, boom, done. We've seen now how to create a complete end-to-end -end solution that hopefully gives you a nice idea of how you can get started with Power Automate Desktop. We had a video specifically on that before where we really talked about the interface. Now we're gonna show you over a series of videos how to add small little incremental changes to a Power Automate Desktop solution you might create. This is the very beginning. This is part one where you're gonna see how to create the solution and then we're gonna add small incremental changes to it over time. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Again, if you're looking for more in-depth training on Power Automate Desktop, check out our RPA in a Day class available free on our Pragmatic Works on-demand learning system. You can sign up for free, have access to it forever that doesn't expire. Uh, you can check that out at the link below. So thank you much for, so much for joining in this video. We look forward to showing you more in a future one. Thanks so much.